If you're in need of binder organization tips that sustain you throughout the school year and not just the first three days of school, then welcome to this video. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to show you guys some back to school binder organization tips. And most of these are relating on how to actually sustain that throughout the school year and not just the first three days of school. So with that said, let us get right into the video. Okay, so the first thing that I recommend is using tab dividers and I think we've all heard of them. But basically, they're a really great way to section off your handouts. So some people like to have just one binder for all their classes. And that just amazes me because how are people able to fit all their papers into one binder? Like I can't even fit all my papers for one class. So how are they doing it for all eight of their classes? I have no idea. Because I use one binder for one class, that means I can use my tab dividers to section off papers in a more specific way. So here are a couple of ways you can divide your tab dividers. Class notes, readings, handouts, projects, tests, and vocabulary. The way I organize my dividers is based on each grading cycle. So we happen to have five grading cycles, so it just kind of works out perfectly. So I know that tab dividers are pretty expensive. So if you want to use it to its maximum potential, then try putting a piece of tape over your tabs and then labeling them. That way you can keep on reusing it because all you have to do is rip off the tape and it's basically brand new. Here's a pro tip, but if you ever have a stack of hole punched paper that you want to put in your binder but can't because it's not aligned properly, try taking a mechanical pencil and just kind of like stabbing the hole and just like moving it around to get the holes to align. It honestly works every single time I do it. The next tip I have is to not put anything, I repeat anything, into the front pocket. In fact, let me just walk you through a very quick scenario. So you're in class and the bell just rung. There's like eight different pieces of paper on your desk. So you think, okay, let me just shove this into my front pocket. But I swear, once I get home, I will put it back into its appropriate section. The next day comes and you realize you haven't put it in your pocket. You have another assignment. Think, okay, I'm just going to put it in my pocket. Worry about it when I get home. The next day, just shove it into your pocket. It's okay. I'll take care of it. And then a couple of days pass and then you just start throwing everything, literally every single assignment into your front pocket. Yeah, sound familiar? Yeah, I thought so. And that is why I absolutely recommend never, ever, ever put anything into that front pocket. Once you start, you won't stop. At this point, you're not even using your binder. You're not even using a folder. You're using a pocket. That is so sad. I am so sorry. So I just now talked about how you shouldn't put anything into your front pocket. But let's be honest, you're probably going to do it anyways. And don't worry, I don't blame you. I totally get it. Now, if you do plan to somewhat organize your binder, then I'd highly encourage you to add a little timestamp to every single one of your assignments. Just add the date, month, and year. Now, for the most part, people like to organize their binder chronologically. So when you do add a timestamp, then you're going to know exactly where to place your handouts, your notes, your assignments. Now, when you don't, you're going to lose motivation to organize because you're not going to know where to put anything. So you're just going to leave everything in your pocket. And as I've expressed, putting things in your pocket is a very sad, sad, sad habit. Don't be a sad person. Okay, I'm so sorry. This next part is going to sound very, very sarcastic. I am very sorry. So I'm sure we all have that very cheap notebook paper that literally tears every single time you touch it. And we can't all set our minds to buying that very overpriced five-star reinforced paper. 
So lucky for you, I'm here to save the day and here is a little tutorial on how to make your own DIY reinforced paper. The materials you're going to need are very simple. All you'll be needing is tape and a hole puncher. Alternatively, you can also use a mechanical pencil. Anyways, the first thing we're going to do is place a piece of tape over the holes and we want to do that on both sides. Then all we're going to do is we're going to take our hole puncher and just hole punch it. Alternatively, you could also use a mechanical pencil and just stab at the holes. That works too. Now granted, I clearly messed up, but you know, that's just life that happens. Not everything has to be perfect. Not everything has to be aesthetic. Yes, it doesn't look that great, but hey, at least now my paper doesn't rip every time I touch it. So if you know me even the slightest, you'll know that I'm horrible, horrible at ending videos, but this is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed and found these tips useful, and if you did, maybe consider liking this video and subscribing. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!